Kia ora, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, everything you need to know in 90 seconds to 9 o'clock, with news the world's largest economy is now bigger than its pre-pandemic level, but the push up isn't what they had hoped. The US reported its second quarter economic growth at 6.5%, which was slightly higher than the 6.3% first quarter expansion. But this was a major miss when 8.5% growth was expected, even though the US economy is now larger than its pre-pandemic level. While household consumption roared back, this was undermined by a smaller new house building activity, smaller federal government spending than a year ago, and the surge in imports, all factors we've covered in these reports previously. US personal consumption expenditure prices rose more than expected, however, up 6.4% and well above expectations. This is the inflation measure that the US Fed looks to more than the CPI. Initial jobless claims in the US came in high again last week, extending the higher levels were reported for the prior week. The actual level was 345,000, taking the total number of people on this support to 3.2 million. And US pending home sales levels for June disappointed too, falling 1.9% from a year ago when a slight rise was expected. Sharply higher prices for residential housing is taking the top off demand faster than thought. In China, a new type of electric battery has gone into production, one that uses less expensive mineral components. The German inflation rate jumped sharply to 3.8% in July, far above the 2.3% in June, and well above the expected 3.3%. The cost of goods were up a rather startling 5.4% year on year, and if it wasn't for a quite low rises for services, the overall result would have been much higher. And German employment grew strongly in June, however, and their jobless numbers fell far more than expected. The employment gains were the largest since their pandemic has affected them. The jobless rate was now down to 3.7%, although that's unchanged from May. Globally, air cargo markets are strong. June industry-wide cargo volumes are up almost 10% above June 2019 levels, and air cargo drivers point to further growth ahead. But most of that strength was in North American markets. Asian Pacific markets are flat on that basis. And ANZ is reported as saying that they expect tens of thousands of Sydney siders to lose their jobs because of the new strict lockdown measures and the length of time the new lockdown could last. They say between 50 and 60,000 workers in New South Wales could lose jobs. US Treasury 10-year yield starts today at just on 1.27% and a one basis point change. And the price of gold is now just on $1,831 an ounce, which is up almost 2% or a large $34 higher than this time yesterday. We're now back to levels last seen in mid-June. And oil prices have risen by a dollar, and in the US they're now just on $73 a barrel, while the international Brent price is still just under $75 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar opens today at just on 70.1 US cents, and up more than three quarters of a percent higher than this time yesterday. Against the Australian dollar, we're at 40 basis points higher at 94.8 Australian cents. And against the euro, we're also higher at 59 euro cents. That means our trade weighted index starts today at 72.8 after an overnight turn up. We welcome feedback on these issues. Leave a comment below or on our website. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and that was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.